Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I apologize for being late. That's completely my fault. And I know a lot of you are working parents and have very busy jobs, so I apologize. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to having a conversation with you and hearing what's on your minds. And I also want to thank you for everything you do on your platforms to communicate with the American public about everything uh, somewhat w that we're doing, but everything that's going on out there. It's, it's really important platforms, so thank you. Um, Hannah, I think we're starting with you. Hi, Jen. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for having us here. Um, really appreciate it. Um, I'm Hannah Bronfman, and I am a wellness entrepreneur. I'm the founder of HB Fit, and I wrote a book called Do What Feels Good. And I'm just going to hop right into my first question here. Um, so research shows that there are many benefits of high-quality preschool associated with the development of children, such as improved reading and math skills. In addition to the benefits for children, preschool increases labor force participation among women, which boosts family earnings. In President Biden's American Family Plan, he calls for free, universal, high-quality preschool to all three- and four-year-olds. While this universal access to preschool for all families can be beneficial to low-income families, what are the strategies the Biden administration is thinking about implementing that will ensure that lower socioeconomic communities will have access to these resources? Well, Hannah, thank you so much for your question. This is such a hugely important issue. And while I'm excited about a lot of the things we're doing in the Biden-Harris administration, I will say the American Families Plan and a lot of the ben potential benefits for child care, for early childhood education, as you mentioned, are very close to my heart and I'm, I'm very excited about. And just to add to what the important point you just made, it, statistics show that kids who go to preschool, universal preschool as opposed to daycare, are more than 50 percent more likely to go uh, to graduate from high school. And if that doesn't tell you how important this is to invest in, I don't know what does. But your child care question is a really important one because, as you know and I know, a lot of people need, families need wraparound care, right? They want to send their kids to universal uh, preschool, but they also may need child care after that. Or maybe they have kids who aren't three or four, as you said, and they still are, don't have enough money to make ends meet. So what's proposed in the President's American Families Plan is that um, for families making up to 1.5 percent uh, of the state median income, uh, they will only, uh, they will pay no more than seven percent of their income for all children under five uh, for child care. That's what's proposed. It's something that we know, as you said, Hannah, which is such an important point, to get more women in the workforce, uh, to ensure we have a more diverse workforce. We need to make child care uh, easier and more affordable. Uh, so that's definitely a key component of the plan. Love that. Thank you for that answer, Jen. And um, I'm a new mom, and I know that you are a mom of two young children, and you're a total boss lady. So, so are you. How, I, old is your, how old is your son? son? Six months. Six months. Oh, my goodness. Are you sleeping at all? Um, miraculously, I am. Wow. He's a very good You have a sleeper. miracle baby. <laughs> you have a miracle baby. <laughs> so, so I've heard. Um, so I, I kind of just want to ask you, you know, you're in an extreme, you know, high stress position, um, but you do it with such grace. So I just wanted to ask, like, if you have any sort of work balance uh, tips that you can kind of share with, you know, the new mom com community. Sure. Well, first I would say, and I've learned this over time, not that I'm an expert, but I have a um, five and a half year old, or she would say five and three quarters or something like that, and a three year old. And what I've learned over time is to be gentle with myself, to give myself space um, and not to uh, allow myself to be judged by what the expectations are of others. And I, uh, when I took this job, one of the things that I was very mindful of, and I'm sure you, this is a challenge for you as you're dealing with your busy life and having a child, is um, how do I get that quality time with them? You know, and I'm not going to be home at five o'clock or five fifteen, so I'm not going to have that time where you're reading books and you're getting ready for dinner. And I just realized I had to make my own path for it. And I spend time with my kids. Uh, my daughter is like a self-designated early riser, so sometimes she's up in my room at 5.30 in the morning or 5.45 in the morning. I spend time with them early in the morning. We get quality time. This morning we read Lady and the Tramp um, before I came to work. I have a whole life sometimes before I come to work, but that 45 minutes of time is my time, is quality time for me. It doesn't have to look like what it looks like for everybody else, um, but that's one of the lessons I guess I've learned over time, and I hope other moms um, who are close followers 
followers of yours or other parents, dads too, they're also important, uh, you know, be gentle on themselves and don't let the expectations of others on what your work-life balance needs to look like determine what your path forward is. Amazing. Thank you so much. And I just really, again, thank you for having us all here uh, today because this is a very, you know, monumentous moment for all of us, I think. So thank, thank you. you. And, and thanks for chatting. And thanks for chatting. You have a miracle baby and um, keep rocking it as a working mom. Thank you so much. All right. So Drew and Jonathan, I think you're next. Can I just say first yes. that my daughter, I'm sure this is, I don't know if this is your TV demographic, but my five and a half year old is obsessed with your show. She loves home shows. That is her ask. Amazing. More than Disney well, movies. We're looking, we're looking for a property sister. Um, so she's, she's handy and she she's can swing in. a sledgehammer. Great. She's in. Yeah, she she's in. in. She, she gives lots of critiques, just points of view. So great to meet you. Great to meet you. Yeah. And uh, I just want to say as well, huge huge opportunity for us as well to talk to, to you about what the families we work with are looking for. We've renovated over 470 homes with our shows, helped 470 Amazing. families. So we've really, over the years, learned what's important to families. And, and so this is a great way to discuss that. Yeah. And also for years, I mean, we've worked with Habitat for Humanity, building safe and affordable housing in the U.S. and around the world so that everyone has a decent place to live. So my question focuses on how this administration is working on the housing challenge. So through the, throughout the pandemic, we were told that staying in our homes was the first line of defense to keep our families and communities safe and healthy. But what about those who didn't have safe or decent housing or were in overcrowded living spaces? What is this administration, you know, what have you learned um, through the pandemic about the importance of housing and what can be done to support it? Uh, it's been a huge issue during the pandemic, as, as you both well know, given all of the important work uh, that you do. And, you know, there's a number of steps we've taken as an administration. Uh, we've, of course, uh, supported and put in place an eviction moratorium uh, that has uh, allowed uh, many people to stay in their homes. At the end of April, there were over six million renters who had not paid back rent, according to the U.S. Census, making them more at risk of eviction, which really tells you how widespread this challenge was, as you both know but um, across the country. And, you know, the pandemic, we focused a lot on the health component of this, but this is a dual crisis. This is also an economic crisis and one that was impacting uh, people who were having ch challenging, uh, having a challenging time staying in their houses, of course, being able to buy houses, but even stay in their homes they were renting. Uh, so uh, that's a, an area we supported. A total of $45 billion in rental assistance has been made available to Americans, including $21.5 billion in the American Rescue Plan. Uh, and so that's something that we have gotten out there into communities just even over the last couple of months. Um, but what you also know is that, you know, we also need to think about how we are uh, investing, addressing additional challenges like supply chain uh, issues. Uh, and that's one of the areas we've been focused on, because as you all know, uh, there are shortages of lumber and construction tools, and uh, that's impacting uh, the number of new homes that are that, uh, that uh, communities are able to build, which is impacting the prices of homes that have been around for a while. So we also have a supply chain Review that's been underway, and we want to use many levers in the federal government to help address those shortages and see what we can do to address it. And then the third thing I would say is we really want to think about um, the opportunity we have moving forward to uh, invest in uh, industries, invest in retrofitting homes, invest in uh, ways that we can kind of modernize how we think about construction and housing uh, and opportunities in the future. So uh, it's definitely on our minds and making sure we are enabling families to put food on the table, to stay in their homes during this still difficult time. Good jobs numbers, still 7 million people are out of work, um, is very front and center for the president and this entire administration. Mm -hmm. That's amazing, thank you. I, uh, I guess I'll jump in with my little mini separate bio for myself. I'm Jonathan, I'm the better looking property brother. Clearly, um, I can confirm I that. Say, everyone else says it. I'm out. <laughs> uh, we, um, you know, last year we put a documentary out on PBS and, and it's, it was really a three year deep dive in my life um, into the secret war that was being waged against the renewable energy industry um, by fossil fuel utilities. And it was mind blowing to me, and I'm in the, the home space to learn about a lot of this stuff. And so um, some of that research that came back is, is sort of directing the question I have for you. According to Rewiring America, which is a nonprofit I'm a part of that's committed to electrifying the economy as a path to addressing the climate crisis, mm -hmm. there are at least 65 million homes that would save about a little over 27 
billion on their energy bills every single year if we leveled the cost between efficient electric space and water heaters in comparison to the appliances they replace. Our households are responsible for 42% of our energy related emissions. So the only way to hit the president's climate targets would be to electrify every home in America. My audience, I know like it's very important to them to save money on their bills and if they can help the planet along the way, all the better. So my question is how will the American Jobs Plan catalyze the market so that we can make these electric appliances the least expensive and the most convenient alternative at the time of replacement? Well, I love this question. I love every question, but I love this question because, you know, people shorthand the American Jobs Plan as an infrastructure plan, and it absolutely is, but it is also a green jobs plan and a plan that will help our climate, that will put millions of people back to work, and also make homes more energy efficient for so many families, saving costs for them. There's a win, 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 win there. Uh, there's so many benefits. So I would say what the president's proposed in the American Jobs Plan is uh, funding to uh, build, rehabilitate, and retrofit more than 2 million homes across the country. That includes uh, an effort uh, that will create new domestic manufacturing opportunities for electric heating and cooling technology that you referenced, help making those appliances uh, more efficient as you're building more homes and as others around the country are building more homes. And it's so exciting because um, it's, there's so, it's multiple benefits, right? You know, these homes are going to cost less uh, because they'll be more efficient. People will be able to spend less money on it. It's better for the environment environment for Mother Earth, as my daughter and I call it. It's a, a lot of benefits. I will also tell you, though, there's another uh, piece that our Department of Energy is working on, uh, the Advanced Water Heating Initiative, uh, it's, uh, which is launching. Uh, it, to this initiative is going to increase the use of high-efficiency grid-connected heat pump water heaters in residential and commercial buildings, which are two to four times, as I'm sure you know, uh, more efficient than conventional water heaters. So we're getting that initiative going, even as we're working to get this funding to retrofit 2 million homes, because this is a huge uh, priority. Uh, uh, to this uh, this administration. And I think that's the exciting thing, too, because we're in a time where, you know, what I've seen, the, the technology is now here. It's not an either or situation. It's good for jobs, good yeah. for investment, good for the economy. So yeah. you can't pretend it's not good for jobs and everything. So thank no, you so much. Yeah. Absolutely not. It, it absolutely is. You know, rebuilding lead pipes so kids have clean drinking water, that creates jobs. Making sure our infrastructure is uh, weatherized, that creates jobs. Um, and we can do it in a way that's uh, beneficial to, to everyone. Thank you so much. Thank it's very so much nice to time. meet you both. All right, let's see here. And say hi to your daughter, by the way. Tell I, her, uh, she'll, we'll, she'll be very we'll excited. Mm -hmm. she'll, she'll be very excited. Um, okay, so um, Amelie, I think you're next. Oh, yes, you're next on the screen. Very hi. nice to meet you. Me too. Um, my name is Amelie Zilber. I just finished my freshman year at Georgetown University. So um, I'm very, very, very honored to be here. I use Go my platform. Hoyas. Yes, go Hoyas. Um, I use my platform mainly to spread awareness about social justice issues and to inform young people in specific about domestic and international current affairs. So again, what an honor. Thank you so much. I'm so very grateful. Um, just going to jump straight into my Please question. Do. Um, the American Families Plan includes an initiative granting everyone to two free years of college. Mm -hmm. However, a significant amount of working class American families suffer from broader problems beyond that of just having the resources to access affordable education. You know, they work on week to week paychecks and simply cannot afford the time off to attend college. So how will the American Families Plan accommodate families to help them escape structural poverty? Such a great question. Well, first, the American Families Plan is a key component of it for a number of reasons. One is that um, it's going to uh, invest $109 billion, as you said, uh, into the economy, or that's what we're proposing, to help make college, community college uh, free for so many people around the country who wouldn't otherwise have that opportunity. But we also know that uh, some people who might be taking the opportunity to go back to college, my mom didn't go to college until after I was born, and she was, uh, I think, in her late, and she must have been in her 30s. She was in her 30s. Some people have kids when they go back to college, and we need to plan for that, too. That's also why um, uh, there's an opportunity in the American Families Plan, or there's funding that we're proposing, I should say, to help make childcare more affordable and more accessible for so many families across the country. Because we know that that can be a huge factor that's preventing sometimes moms or working moms from being able to take those college classes, whether they're at night or on the weekends or whenever they may uh, be convenient. Uh, you know, but I, and I think we are really trying to um, 
through this proposal, but also through all of our initiatives, uh, Amelie, make uh, make college, make investing in education uh, something that's from the start, right? We're, we're, this community college initiative will help people now, but what we've seen through statistics is that people who go, attend universal pre-K, who attend preschool as opposed to daycare, they're much more likely to graduate from high school and want to go to college. So this is also something we want to invest in from the beginning and make kids from an early age believe that this can be a part of their future and it's not out of reach. I love that. It's building from the ground up. What exactly. a beautiful answer. Better said. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. Congratulations. I can't believe you're a college freshman. Very, very impressive, um, everything you're doing. And thanks for using your platform to talk about all these issues. My sister also went to Georgetown, too. So that's how I know about the Hoya piece. Go Hoyas. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Curly, you're next. Hi there. Oh, I can't hear you. Make sure you're not on mute. Okay. I literally was like, woohoo! Hello. Oh, oh see? Oh, woohoo. All right. Good. Um, my name is Curly Velasquez. I'm from Los Angeles. I am in, uh, I'm part of BuzzFeed's Latinx vertical called Fetal Like. I actually started in the kitchen and worked my way up into this channel. Wow. Um, I come from a Salvadorian family that came over undocumented in the 80s. And it's actually something that I'm super, super, super proud of. So I was really happy to see that dreamers were included in the American Families Plan. It's something that I really um, hold close to me. I was wondering, are there any other any other like benefits for dreamers, and will there be other opportunities for people who are looking to go back? Yeah. Well, one, this is such an important question. I'm just going to repeat what you conveyed just to give everybody all the information. So the American Families Plan, which the president has proposed and we want to get through Congress, includes two years of free community college. We've talked about that a little bit. But that, and that's going to apply to dreamers as well. So uh, that's an important component everybody should know. The other piece that's in the American Families Plan, because we know cost can be uh, an issue uh, even as you continue into college, right? As you, maybe you move past community college, is an increase in Pell Grant awards. We know there needs to be more funding for people to be able to afford uh, to continue their education. Uh, so that's a component as well. Uh, but overall, I think, um, you know, the president's been a long supporter of Dreamers, as I think you well know, and uh, he believes that a path to citizenship should be possible and should be something that Congress can work together on uh, in order to bring people out of the shadows and make sure that people don't have a fear about what their future looks like. College and education is a part of that, but also we want to move forward on legislation uh, to make sure Dreamers feel protected uh, across the country even beyond that. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that. I mean, we are all watching. The community is so eager to see what's going to happen. Um, thank you for answering that question. And, and yes, we are here. We are definitely watching. Great. You should be. Keep, keep holding everybody accountable. And thanks for using your platform to communicate with so thank many people. You. Oh, trust. We will. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Benito, hello. Hi, Jen. Hi, You're how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I love your yellow. It's very happy for a Friday afternoon. Thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying to bring you sunshine. Great. You're um, bringing it. Good. Okay. So my name is Benito Skinner. I'm a writer, actor, and content creator. And my question for you is, I come from a family of teachers, uh, both my parents and sister. And growing up, I would often watch them work late into the night, even spending their own money on school supplies for their classes. Um, and I think a school is only as good as its teachers. So after an insanely hard year, what does this plan do to support them? Well, first, thank you to your family. To, you said your mother and your sister? So my mom, dad, uh, aunt, sister, yeah, wow. a lot of teachers. Wow, you're a family of educators. One, thank you yeah. to all of them. Teachers are hugely unsung heroes, heroes who don't wear capes. I think as a mom and so many millions of moms across the country, we have an even greater value from teacher for teachers after the last year and seeing what they do. My mother-in-law yeah. is a retired teacher, too, so I have some in my family as well. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. Um, she taught my daughter how to read over Zoom. It's incredible. Um, when I would say first, um, teachers need more funding, um, and they need more funding so that they don't have to do exactly what you said, and we need to incentivize getting people into teaching. You have a family of teachers, but we want it to be an industry and a career path that people are excited about. They're shaping future generations and young people who will be leaders in our country moving forward. And the American Families Plan, uh, which we're, we're working to move forward, invests $9 billion in teachers, and that could cover things like reducing the cost of education for people who want to become teachers, 
making that pathway easier, helping current teachers get additional certifications in high demand areas, paying teachers for additional, for taking on additional leadership roles in the school, like mentoring new, new teachers. And it's also funding to help recruit, develop, and retain more teachers of color who can have a particularly uh, impactful role on communities out there. We want to invest in teachers and teaching. We want them to feel as valued as they uh, should feel out there. Um, and just thank you again to you and your family and uh, all the incredible role they've played in shaping so many minds. Oh, amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and shout out all teachers. We're love. We're obsessed. We love teachers. Um, love teachers. I, yes. I have one more question. Um, sure. It's not as serious, but um, I know you're at the inauguration. Um, I need to know if you came in contact with Lady Gaga. I wish I did. I will tell you, and this is like not a very uh, fancy story, but during yeah. Lady Gaga's performance, I was actually on a bus coming to the White House because we had to come and work that day. So, and I did a briefing on the first day, so I had to come to work and get ready for the briefing. So I was on a bus. I did tell you one, I will tell you, my children love Lady Gaga. I love Lady Gaga. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the documentary. I just like, we could keep talking Lady Gaga, but, um, yeah. and we blast bad romance in the car sometimes. But I to. was in the car, I mean, not in the car, I was in a bus with some colleagues we did all put it up on our phones so we could kind okay. of hear and play. She was amazing. So no, I wish I had a Lady Gaga story for you. One day. Okay. Well, it's yeah, the dream I'll right there. The we'll bring her back to the White House. Yeah. I love it. Um, She's an open invitation. So okay, perfect. Can't <laughs> Great wait. I'll talking with her. you. Thank you so much for everything you do and for lifting up all these important issues. Hi, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Hey there, how are you, Jen? Great, thanks for, thanks for doing this and for taking the time. And I'm gonna keep apologizing for being late. I know you guys are busy people. <laughs> no sweat, that's what I appreciate it. Um, well, first off, uh, condolences on uh, missing out on Lady Gaga. I'm so sorry about that. Um, what? I'm gonna keep you know the I'm... dream alive. And, and Benito will Please come do. with, or no, it wasn't, who, was, who just asked? I'm sorry, it wasn't Benito. Who was, oh, yes, it was, right? Who was excited that was about funny. that? Yes, he's coming, he's coming, <laughs> Benny's coming. That's right. Okay, and first off, I just wanna say, Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. I think it's a really innovative approach and I think it's a really important conversation. So thanks so much. Uh, I'm you. Jordan Stratton, I'm, I'm with The Dad. Uh, we're a media brand and community of parents specifically about celebrating modern fatherhood and everything that it looks like. Um, so obviously this is right up our alley talking about this American Family Plan and the Jobs Plan. Uh, and there are obviously a lot of great things in both of them. Uh, but my big question is who's gonna pay for it? Like, are you saving me a few hundred dollars a month only for me to pay a few thousand dollars at the, in taxes at the end of the year? Are you a CEO of a major corporation? I don't, you're not, right? Uh, not yet, if, not yet. You may Just be in the future. If, then, if you are one day, I wish you luck in doing that, but then you may have to pay more in taxes. Uh, but what I'll I will tell it. you um, is that um, President's proposed a way to pay for these proposals. His bottom line is no American making less than $400,000 a year will pay a penny more in taxes. And that's actually why he's been opposed to some of the proposals that have been out there, like taxing user fees or gas mileage. That would, that would be a tax on dads, right? And working parents and people who are just trying to make ends meet. So what he's proposed is uh, raising, uh, the lower, uh, raising the corporate rate, I should say, back to what it was in the first year of the George W. Bush administration, having individual Americans, highest income earners, the top 1%, pay a little bit more to pay for his range of proposals. He's also proposed the IRS having the ability to make sure people are paying their taxes. That actually could raise a bunch of money. Uh, and making sure that uh, some of these companies that paid zero dollars in taxes over the last few years has to pay a minimum of 15 percent. So uh, I bet you you are not going to be hurt uh, by this in any way. You'll benefit uh, because uh, future kids, as a member of the dad community, uh, will, you'll be able to help tell your dad community that you Universal pre-K could be a real thing. Community college in the future could be a real thing. We'll have a better road to take our kids on to preschool. So there's a lot of benefits, um, and we've proposed ways to pay for it that won't uh, won't break the backs of uh, working parents, dads, moms, either way. I'll also say, since you gave me the opportunity, I would not be able to do this job without my husband, and you know, and like a dad. He's a dad. He's an amazing dad. I'm I'm like getting emotional. Um, He's an amazing dad. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, he's an amazing dad. And, you know, uh, I am so fortunate, as many working moms have and as many working women have out there, to have a partner who does the child care, who does the wake up, who does the to bed stuff. And uh, I'm hugely lucky. So a shout out to all the dads out there um, for doing that. Um, it's hugely important. And thank you.
It definitely is, and it is a, it is a team effort. We just need more dads, it sounds like your husband, and fewer ones that consider watching their kids babysitting, because come on. Yeah. <laughs> We're not. We're not all about watching that. your kids is not babysitting. We we can. No. That's a T-shirt. Um, we can Thank wear it together. You. Okay, good. Thank you. So speaking of of parenthood, yeah. I'm going to pivot just a little bit. Sure. So kids kids constantly ask for expensive toys, and even when the answer is a definite no, parents often respond with a maybe in order to avoid like a nuclear meltdown in the middle of Target. You know, mm -hmm. so. But then they have to deal with the relentless follow-up questions, like, why not now? Like, when will it be happening? That kind of thing. And I feel like this is a relatable situation for a press secretary. <laughs> um, any, any advice on how to shut that down effectively? Well, I think parents could try this with their kids, and we'll see if it works. Um, I'm not going to be able to get you that toy now. I'm happy to discuss this next week uh, when we have a, an opportunity to have this conversation again. So we should tell toddlers we can circle back. That's what you're saying. Yeah, some version of that. Absolutely. Like that. And, and we'll see I'll what's possible. That. Punt it to the we'll birthday. That along. That's my shorthand <laughs> advice. Something you could ask for, for your birthday. I love it. Add it to the list. That's add, great. Add it to Thank the list. Thank you so much. All right. Chriselle, how are you? Thanks so much for joining us and for your patience. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here. I'm Chriselle Lynn, and first and foremost, I am a mother of two girls, a six-year-old and a two-year-old. I am the co-founder of Bumo, which is reimagining the future of family, bringing childcare solutions to the workplace so parents can continue to thrive in their career so they don't have to choose one or the other, right? So the American Family Plan is just something that I feel so strongly about. So my very first question is, the American Family Plan will guarantee 12 weeks of paid parental, family, and personal illness and safely by year 10 of the program and then create free pre-K for children for three to four years old. Are there any plans to support working families and parents with children that are younger than three? Because there are so many working parents and moms, especially that have to go back to work um, immediately. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you're right. I mean, this is an important piece because one, a lot of people have kids who are under the age of three and four. Uh, I have now, my youngest is three, but you do. And I know many people who follow you and, and pay close attention to what you have to say um, as well do as, do as well. You know, the American Families Plan um, proposes $225 billion to make childcare more affordable. And the way that we're approaching that is to ensure that families that are making just 1.5% over the state median income range will only have to pay 7%, uh, the, a max, I should say, of 7% uh, in order to have a, a affordable, high-quality child care. Because we know if we're going to get more women back in the workforce, if we're going to make sure we have a more diverse workforce, if we're going to make it possible uh, for a lot of families uh, to, uh, to engage in the workforce, we need to make child care accessible and affordable. So that's a piece of the proposal I'm really excited about. It also extends the child tax credit by five years, which is something that will give uh, working families and parents a little extra money in their pockets and hopefully help uh, make ends meet as well. That's incredible. I mean, I think working parents need the support more than ever coming out of COVID. So this is really, really exciting for myself and the community. And a personal question I have for you, sure. Jen. Uh, as a mother of two and serving as a White House press secretary, I'm sure you come across a lot of challenges. How do you um, face holding such a prominent position while balancing the demands of motherhood? <laughs> well, thank you for that question. And thank you for what you do as a role model, as a working mom with two little kids. And you know it's a balance. Some days it's messy. The sausage making is a little messy behind the scenes. Um, you know, what, what I will say is that um, my kids have made me better at what I do. They're grounding. Um, they bring me down to earth. Um, they have no idea what I do at the White House every day, nor do they care. Um, and they're a reminder of what's important. Um, and some days that is kind of the most valuable, uh, best thing that happens in my day. My, my three-year-old son calls himself the hug machine. <laughs> I don't know if he'll do this forever, but, you know, a hug from him, which he has a lot of pride in, it kind of makes any stressful day go away. Um, and so, you know, that's first and foremost. Uh, but I also will say what I've learned over time, and you've probably learned, is um, not to be too hard on yourself. Um, some days are imperfect. Some days I forget to buy a birthday present for the birthday party. Uh, you know, some days I forget to send the permission.
permission slip or to make sure we have a babysitter for the weekend or whatever it may be. Um, sometimes my kids eat Cheetos. It's okay. Um, and I try not to be too um, hard on myself or harsh on myself um, and just kind of stay grounded in what's important, which is probably like those hugs from the hug machine. I love that. My kids had McDonald's for dinner last night. So it's okay. Means- and you know what? They got up this morning and they're probably absolutely fine. So there you go. Be gentle you- on yourself. Thank you. Great talking with you. Okay. Brittany. Hi, Brittany. How you doing? Hi. Thank you for having this conversation with us today. This is really exciting. I am a digital content creator. I'm also a mom to a 14 year old and I am currently pregnant, expecting one. Congratulations. So you new, look amazing. Mom again. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. So I wanted to ask you an issue that became especially apparent during the pandemic is just how many children rely on daily meals provided from the public schools. And I want to ask how will the AFP help families who are worried about making sure their kids get enough to eat when school is out in the summer and during holiday breaks? This is such an important question, um, and one I will say on a personal level uh, kind of breaks my heart. Uh, I mean, I live um, in a suburb of D.C., and there are still many, many people who don't have enough food to put on the table, and you wouldn't think of that necessarily of uh, the community I live in. I will tell you that one of the first things we did in passing the American Rescue Plan is uh, send out, we sent out checks to tens of millions of Americans. And what we saw the impact of just that alone is we're going to cut child poverty in half by the end of the year. That will have a huge impact. But we need to do more than that. And one of the things we've proposed in the American Families Plan, and and so there's more that's actually going out in terms of uh, debit cards to families and kids around the country that will go out over the summer. Because as you know from talking about this issue, one of the challenges is also, as you said, when kids are not in school, and they don't have those free meals and free lunches. So debit cards are going to be going out thanks to some of the plans we've already passed to kids this summer. But the American Families Plan uh, also proposes additional funding to ensure that we're helping these uh, kids, uh, you know, get those meals, help families uh, make, ensure families uh, can uh, make ends meet and ensure that the nutritional value that they get from these benefits from schools is fully funded in the schools, but they're also getting that additional benefit in the summer. So uh, this is a, in a really important issue. I'm really grateful to you for elevating it because I think we don't talk about it enough and the impact of poverty on childhood nutrition and kids getting access to basic meals. Um, And it's something that's front and center to the family's plan and something we've already worked to pass funding for so we can ensure we're helping kids uh, make ends meet even in the upcoming months while we're trying to pass that legislation into law. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brittany. It was really a pleasure talking to you and congratulations again. All right. Clea and Joanna, you're so um, patient. Um, You do amazing work. I want you to come to my house. Everyone does. I don't even know. Um, Thank you for being here and for everything you do. Oh, we are so grateful, Jen. Thank you so much for having us. Um, And we are obviously working moms and we both have two kids each. And we just want to have say thank you to all the teachers. We could not have the business that we have if it wasn't for teachers. Yeah. So we certainly could not uh, make anything work without them. Um, and much like our, our new friend Benito, um, we had a very similar question about how the American Families Plan helps support teachers, um, specifically maybe around uh, mentorship or a- anything else you can maybe elaborate on. Again, very near and dear to our hearts. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. I, I could not agree with you more. Um, I think I all of us, probably you guys too, have an even greater value for teachers after living through the last year and a half. And the role they play and what they've done to teach remotely during the pandemic and make it safe to return to schools. And I even think my daughter's going to kindergarten. God bless these teachers who are going to be welcoming kindergartners in who haven't really been around kids. So I'm going to be forever grateful to teachers. Um, You know, what's interesting, and I've learned a lot about this too, given the impact on schools of the pandemic, is that even before the pandemic, schools needed an estimated 100,000 additional certified teachers. It's an area there's a huge shortage of around the country and a huge shortage of diversity among teachers as well, which has a huge impact on kids and their futures. So uh, as I think I... 
and Benito, I think, goes by Benny. I'm not sure. We're going to have to ask him. But, um, you know, <laughs> his, his question, we, you know, we are uh, proposing to invest $9 billion in teachers. And some of that is uh, paying for certification, paying for schooling, paying for recruitment, paying for supplies. Um, you know, my mother-in-law is a teacher. I've watched her. She's retired now, so she's been able to help my daughter, which is amazing. But um, I've watched her over the years you know, grading papers till midnight, getting supplies. We see so many teachers who aren't paid nearly enough doing this out of their own pockets. That shouldn't be the case. But we also need to recruit more teachers and make sure school systems can pay for that. So that's part of what we've proposed. Unsung heroes, all heroes don't wear capes. Um, and teachers are certainly examples of that. They should wear capes every day. <laughs> they should. Who doesn't want to wear a cape? I won't wear a cape. I would. Yeah. I would too. Uh, quite cheap. Bring back capes. <laughs> You saw Amanda Gorman. She was fabulous. She um, did. So I don't know that everyone can pull off like, Amanda Gorman's amazing style, but yes. I know. Don't even get me started. If, if I could pivot just a little bit. Sure. Um, we had the just unbelievable good fortune to interview former President Barack Obama. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. No big deal. No, um, we'll never get over no, it. No, our whole yeah. life. But um, yeah. So we did a rapid fire with him, and I want to see if the rapid fire with you could be a possibility. Great. Sure. Let's do it. All right, it's very hard hitting. Okay, I'm ready. Candy or champagne? Depends on the time of day. <laughs> I would say right. candy for the majority of the oh. day. I'm like right. elf, I would eat candy for every meal if that All were right. an option. I'm an adult, candy. I could, but it wouldn't be very healthy. I do, okay. but okay. okay. I'm Digital. with you, we're, I'm, a, I'm a candy spirit animal. I see you, Jen. All right, digital or paper? Primarily digital, even books, but I have a little old schoolness to me, and I still subscribe to the Sunday New York Times, which when I see it on my kind of driveway, I get kind of excited. And I like okay, older so books too. I'm a little of both. Yeah, little of both. All right. Next one Queso or guac? Guac. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same I, think, I think that's right. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh oh. This is a key rapid fire question. Oh. No, it, it could make headlines. Who okay. is more organized, POTUS or FLOTUS? FLOTUS. I don't know why I whispered it. Um, Always is. She is a teacher. Of course she's more yeah, organized. Right. I think That's if the president cool. were sitting here, he would also acknowledge that. Um, totally. I, I'm I'm pretty con I have not done like a rapid fire analysis of their organization uh, line by line. Um, and the president obviously is pretty organized given he's the president, but she's on it. She's a teacher. She's That's right. yeah, I, I she's a I, I would follow her organizational methods. Yeah, we see you. Well, thank you so much for this incredible opportunity. Thank you. It was great talking to you. Thanks for everything you do. Thank you. Well, thank you all so much for joining me, and thanks for everything you do to elevate so many important issues to your audiences. And uh, hopefully we'll do this again, maybe at the White House. We'll have to bring you guys all here sometime. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you, thank, you. You. thank, thank so much. you. Thank you so much.